In this tutorial, we're going to create all the toolpaths to machine the five star coffee sign that you see on the screen. We will start by opening up the vectors created in the previous vector drawing tutorial, and that can be accessed as one of the related videos on this web page. So we'll start by closing down this file and opening an existing file. So let's come up to the top and click on File and Close. Okay, so let's open that existing file up. So let's come on to open an existing file and we're going to choose our five star coffee vector drawing file under our V11 tutorial files here. Let's just click open. Now, for those of you who watched the previous tutorial on the five star coffee uh, drawing guide, you'll notice that we have our sign all ready to go here for toolpathing. But for those of you who have not watched that tutorial, I highly recommend watching it now and you'll find it in the related videos and the link below. But with that said, let's look at some of the layers that helped us get to our sign. So let's come up to our layers tab and let's click on the top here. Okay, so you can see we've got our five uh, separate layers. We've got bitmap layer, outline, construction, text, and center graphic. So let's look at those in a bit more detail. But to do so, I'm gonna turn them off first by clicking the light bulb button on the left next to them. Okay, so let's go through one by one. So we've got a bitmap layer in which we used our uh, trace bitmap tool to trace around this bitmap to get our coffee mug for the center of our sign. I'll show you that a little bit later on. We had our outline, which is the main outline for our sign, which we'll be using a uh, we'll be using some V carving on later on. We had our construction lines. Now, if you recall, these helped us with uh, the construction of our next layer, which is our text layer. And we used these guidelines to help us to line up our text, our stars, and we used various methodologies to uh, distort and curve these uh, text related layers onto our guidelines here. So let's just turn off that construction layer because we don't need it at the moment. And finally, as I said earlier, this is our trace bitmap result where we trace that original bitmap of the coffee mug and we size it down and it looks pretty good in the center of our sign. So with that said, I think we can go ahead and now look at toolpathing our sign. So let's come up to the top left here and click on the switch to toolpath commands button and let's get ready to look at some tool paths. But before we do that, we need to have a look at our material setup. So let's come over to the top right here and click on set. So the first thing you'll notice is that we have a thickness of 0.75 inches, which is correct. But I do want to change my XY datum because currently it is set to the center. Now I used the center originally for vector drawing purposes, but because we're now going to machine this, I want to have it in the bottom left-hand corner. So let's just click on that You'll notice that change has taken effect with the red square moving to the bottom left hand corner indicating where the XY datum is. And if you'll notice here we have our Z0 set to the material surface. We don't have a model in this case so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, with our rapid Z gaps above material we have the uh, Z1 or Z1 and Z2 and I'm happy with both of these values. Of course this will be dependent on your machine and your particular settings. And the same again here for our Z gap above material. I'm happy with that as well. So let's just click OK. So now we're going to have a look at using a VCARF toolpath with our vectors. And this is important because we're going to have a look at some of the different effects that you can use using the VCARF toolpath, as well as some of the uh, important notes about the simulation. Because you need to really pay attention to the simulation because this will be what your uh, final product looked like when you go to machine it. So with that said, let's select some of our vectors. Uh, so we can start looking at some toolpaths. So to do so, we're just going to click in the top left hand corner here and we're just going to drag our mouse pointer while holding down the left click over all of our vectors. Now there is another way you can actually select all the vectors on the screen and that's to uh, hit Control and A on your keyboard and that will highlight everything on your worksheet here. Now in this scenario we're going to hold down Shift and we're going to click on our outside uh, outline here for our sign because we don't actually need that uh, for the moment but we'll go ahead and now look at a V carving toolpath for our remaining selected vector. So let's come up to our V carve toolpath here and let's click on that and let's get ready to look at some of these settings. So the first setting we're gonna look at is actually the cutting depths and we're gonna start at the block zero, so the top of our material here. So we're not gonna change the start depth here. And I'm also not going to use a flat depth. Now this is because I'm going to allow the chamfered edge of the uh, V carving toolpath to naturally find the depth depending on the thickness between the vectors. So we, now we need to decide on a tool we're going to use. 
So in this case, I think I'm actually going to use a shallower option first. So I'm just going to pop open our uh, tool database and let's have a look at some of the vbits we have available to us. Okay, so you'll notice that we have four vbits over here under our imperial tools and we've got two 90 degree ones and two 60 degree. Now at the moment I'm actually looking for a shallower effect so I would need a 120 degree vbit but there's not one listed. So what I can do is select a tool that's close enough to it and copy the settings and then amend the angle so I can add a new tool to the database so I can use that on this particular job. So to do that, I can select the tool that's closest to it in terms of settings, which is our VBit 90 degree, one and a quarter inch. I'm gonna come down to the bottom of the form and click on copy the selected tool. And now you'll notice that it's opened up a brand new form for us. Now you'll also notice on the left-hand side here that our VBit here is highlighted um, in kind of a transparent kind of mode here. And that's because uh, we haven't finished applying all of our settings to it. And you'll also notice the name is currently the same, but don't worry about that for the moment because we'll change that and that change will take effect in just a moment. So to do so, we need to come over to our included angle. We're gonna change this to 120 degrees and you'll notice the name has been reflected up here. It hasn't been reflected here yet because as, as I mentioned earlier, we need to apply the settings first. But before we do that, we need to make sure that we copy our settings from an appropriate tool. And I'm actually gonna copy the settings from the uh, 90 degree one and a quarter inch V bit. So let's just hit copy. And you'll notice now it's already filled out the parameters here for our V bit, but I'm gonna change the pass depth here to a value that's more appropriate. And in this case, I'm gonna go for 0.35 and I'm gonna hit apply. And there we are, you'll notice now the name has changed over here and we've got our 120 degree uh, one and a quarter inch V bit. So let's select that now. I'm just going to come over to the bottom here and make sure that the title of this uh, toolpath is just vcarve and I'm just going to go ahead and hit calculate. Now you'll notice currently in my 3D preview my entire worksheet has gone yellow and that's actually because it's set a global color for this material. So what I want to come up and do is change that. So if you come up to the very top here and where it says active sheet, if you click on this button here in the top right hand corner called sheet one, we're gonna change the appearance of our material here because I want it to look like wood. So if I go to this drop down menu here, I'm gonna come down and you see this, there's a section for wood and I'm gonna choose oak medium. And there we are, you can see that's been reflected now. And now we've got the oak we can use in this instead. Similarly, if you want to choose a different type of wood, let's say you want to choose something like uh, cherry, you can select that and there we are, it's been reflected here as well. But it's always good to know because this will obviously depend on the material that you're using. Uh, so it's good to know that you can actually change the option up here if you need to, to try and help you um, reflect the preview in the uh, most accurate way possible. So with that said, let's actually have a look at preview in our toolpaths. So if we slow down our slider just a little bit, because I want you to be able to see the tool while it's actually going around the preview. So I'm just gonna make sure my toolpath is selected and I'm gonna hit preview. Now, as you can see, it's slowly working its way through the sign here. And there we are. So let's look at this in a bit more detail. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, V carving depth, we neglected to actually set a flat depth and that's because we were gonna let the tool itself and the tool path uh, decide the um, depth determ uh, determined by the um, distance between the vectors. And I'll try and illustrate that now for you. So if I just zoom in a little bit onto our uh, preview, you'll notice that the distance between the vectors here isn't very uh, far. So you've got a much shallower depth, but as you get lower, you get a much uh, deeper uh, cut with your V-carve tool here. You'll, also not, you'll notice that, for example, here as well, where you've got the much wider uh, distance between the vector on the left-hand side of the mug here than you do on the right. And similarly in the handle, where you've got this very small distance here, and as you come to the top here, you've got a much greater distance and a much greater depth. And I think that looks pretty good, but let's zoom out to our active drawing limits for the moment. And at this stage, I think it's important to note that uh, because we're using a shallower depth with our 120 degree uh, V-bit, uh, you could actually use this for something like gilding, where you would get a great greater pickup of the material since it's a shallower depth. And of course, we're liable to get a greater reflection uh, from gold leaf as well. But now I'm actually gonna have a look at um, going in with a deeper tool. So with that said, let's come across now 
And let's close out of our preview. And we're going to look at now looking at a different tool for our recap tool pass. So let's open that back up again. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on select on our tool here. And I'm actually going to change it to a quarter inch uh, 60 degree V bit. And let's just select that. Now I don't need to actually select all our vectors again because our vectors have already been selected and they were part of this tool pass. All you need to do is change the tool and hit calculate. And there we are, there's our new tool path. But let's make sure that our uh, preview is reset first before we run our preview. And let's just preview that tool path. Now, as you can see right away, this is a much deeper cut from our 60 degree uh, V bit. If I just speed this up just a little bit so we can uh, have a look at this in a moment. And there we are. Now, if we zoom in just a little bit, you'll see that it's a much deeper cut, but it's also quite deep in some of the more shallow regions as well. And I may not actually want to have that. Um, so it may actually be better to see if I could get something in between the 120 degree uh, V bit and the uh, 60. So we can meet a nice middle ground there. So again, let's just come back uh, over to our tool pass. And this time I'm going to choose the 90 degree V bit, the one and a quarter inch. Hit select and again, just calculate, reset that preview. And let's have a look at our new preview. And there we are. And right away, you can see that it's not as deep and it's still taking into account the depths where it's got a nice depth where the vectors have a greater distance or if they become more shallow. And that looks pretty nice to me. That looks very, very good. I think that's a nice middle ground we've got here for our tool pass. So now that we're happy with our uh, coffee sign tool path, we need to look at the outside outline. So we can close out this preview and have a look at now machining that. Okay, so let's pop across to our 2D view again. And this time we're going to just zoom out, go back to our active limits. And we're gonna select our outline. And this time we're gonna use a profile tool path. So let's come up to our profile tool path with our outline selected. Now, in this case, if you didn't actually know what the depth of your material was, what you could do here is type in Z and then hit equals on the keyboard and it will uh, put in the correct depth for you of your entire material here for you. So it will tell you the full depth of your material here. So that's the full depth and that's what I wanna do because I wanna cut this out. In this case, I wanna go over to select my tool and I'm gonna choose a quarter inch end mill. I'm happy with that, so let's select that. Then we get the option to choose uh, to machine our vectors outside, inside, or on. This time I actually want to go outside, so make sure that's selected. And I could add tabs now in this toolpath, but in this case, I've actually stuck the sign down or I'm using a vacuum form bed. Um, but if you did want to add tabs, you could do that. So you can click on here and you can add them manually, or you could also uh, just have the pop, uh, software populate these for you uh, by determining these parameters here. And I'm quite happy with that, but I'm just going to make sure that our name for our uh, toolpath is correct. So I'm just going to call this cutout and then I'm going to hit calculate. Okay, so as you can see on the screen with our blue outline here, we've actually got multiple passes going on because of our harder material. But with that said, let's look at now previewing our profile uh, pass. Now, as you can see, it's going around and cutting out our coffee sign for us. And there we are, now it's fully cut out. Now you'll notice that our sign is now independent of this waste material. So you can actually just double click on the waste material and you can get rid of it. Now at this stage, you may want to actually save this image preview out because you may want to give it to a customer, for example. Now there's a couple of ways you can actually represent this. And if you recall earlier when we changed our material using the sheet function at the top here, you can do the same here to modify this to maybe give a better representation of what this might look like in reality for our customer. And to do so, you can use some of the tools up here. So if we click on sheet one here, and we're gonna change our material or our appearance to a solid color. In this case, I'm actually gonna use a gray. And you can also uh, highlight the individual toolpaths as well. So if I make sure my VCarve toolpath is selected, now if I come up to this option here and click on toolpath color, I can now choose from this drop-down list a color to highlight that toolpath. So I'm gonna choose yellow to really make it stand out. And there we are. I think that looks pretty great. So this will give the customer an indication of what it could look like depending on the colors that they use. But I wanna save this out now. 
So you can actually save this just by clicking this button here, save preview image. And I'll call this one uh, coffee sign uh, preview um, uh, one. And I'm just gonna put a one next. I'm gonna create another one in a moment. So let's just save that. Okay, so now I may wanna look at actually changing the material to give the customer a couple of different looks. And I can actually do that again by coming up to our um, options up here on the sheet one. So you can choose edit material settings. And this time I'm actually gonna go for um, a wood material and I'm gonna choose Canadian maple. But I do wanna change the color for my toolpath, which is the VCarve toolpath, which is currently yellow. And this time I'm gonna come back here and click on the toolpath color, but I'm gonna choose a gray this time. And I think that's a really nice combination. I think that works quite well. And again, I'm gonna save that off so I can give the customer a couple of different looks when it comes to this sign. So I'm just gonna save this as coffee preview sign two. I'm just going to save that off. And now you can, of course, send these on to the customers so they can have a look and maybe ch uh, pick which design they prefer. So at this stage, you can now look at saving your toolpaths off so you can run them on your machine. And to do so, I'll refer you to the toolpath saving guide, which has an excellent tutorial on how to save toolpaths. But for a moment, I do want to save this file. So let's come up to File. I'm just going to click a Save As. And I'm going to call this one Five Star Coffee Drawing uh, 2. Uh, 0.5D toolpaths. And so I have this ready to use in future uh, if I ever want to make multiple copies of the sign or make any amendments uh, ready to go. And with that, that concludes our tutorial on the five star coffee vector drawing toolpaths. And I hope you've enjoyed it. And as always, we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.